Okay, so we're going to talk about inverse functions. So inverse function notation is f negative 1 of x. f and g are inverse of each other if f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x equals to x. So if you take the composition function of them, we figure out if they are inverses of each other. So let's go try one of those. <clears throat> so if f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 and g of x is equal to x minus 2 over 3. So we want to know, are they inverses of each other? So, what we need to do is find f of g of x, and we need to know, does it equal x? Well, when we do this, remember, we're taking g of x and plugging it into f of x. So that means we're going to have f at x minus 2 over 3. We're going to plug this in wherever our x's are. So that'll get us 3 times x minus 2 over 3 plus 2. Well, on this part, the 3's will cancel, and we end up with x minus 2 plus 2. Well, the 2's now cancel, and we end up with x. So on the other side, we're looking at finding g of f of x, which means we're going to find g at 3x plus 2. So that means we're going to have um, at where the x is, we will have 3x plus 2 minus 2 over 3. So we plugged in our f function where the x was. Well, the 2's will cancel, and we'll end up with 3x over 3. The 3's will cancel, and we end up with x. Well, the definition said that if we found f of g of x equal to x and g of f of x equal to x, then that tells us that they are, yes, they are inverses of each other. All right, so let's go talk about finding the inverse. So it's something that I like to call Freaky Friday because it's from like the movie where everybody was changing places, the mom and the daughter, and it's the way that I could remember it. I used to tutor, and when I did, I only saw this about once a semester and even when I teach, but because I wasn't teaching it, I was tutoring it, I didn't, I wasn't um, as connected to it. And so as I was, um, always having to look it up, I figured out that it's all about the changing. And that's where I came up with Freaky Friday, so I help remember what we do with inverses. It is all about the y. So if you notice, first of all, we'll change our function f of x to y. So we've got a y there. Then we're going to swap x and y. Then we're going to solve for y and then replace y with the f inverse of x. So it's all about y, and if we just look at that, we'll be able to maybe remember it a little bit easier. So here is example one. Well, I guess this would be example one. Let's go to example two. So we want to find the inverse. So if we have f of x equal to 7x minus 5, and we're looking, um, there's no issues here, so we know our domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity, and there's no fractions. So we don't have to worry about any issues there. But the first thing we're going to worry about is y, right? We've got to have a y there. So f of x becomes y. y is equal to 7x minus 5. Then, because that was our first step, is, let's write that down so we can see. So f of x equals y, 
And then we're going to take x equals, we're going to swap the x and the y values. So we're going to switch them back and forth. So we're going to put x is equal to 7y minus 5, and then we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to add 5 over, get x plus 5 is equal to 7y. Then divide by 7, and we have x plus 5 over 7 is equal to y, and then we'll change that to f inverse of x is equal to x plus 5 over 7 because that last step is to change the inverse and that's all you got to worry about and so let's go look at the graph that's how we're finding them let's go look at some of the graphs of them so if we're looking at the graphs of inverse of functions the domain and the range are going to flip so the graph of the uh, inverse is a reflection of the graph of f. It's hard to see the negative sign in there because it's kind of into the f part about the line of y equals x. So here is the y equals x line. Remember, that's an identity line. And here is the graph of the function. Here is the inverse of the function. Here's another one. Here is the line of y equals x. This would be the function, and this is the inverse. See how they are reflective of each other? This would be another example. So this is our function, uh, and, or this is our function, and then this is the, the inverse that's happening. So um, just understand that they actually swap places between... Um, the values. The domain and the range will actually flip. And you can find those domain and ranges by looking at your graph and you can plot, um, make a t-chart to graph them just like we've graphed previous um, functions. All right, so the next thing that we're going to look at is the vertical line test to see if it's a function or not. And then we'll do the horizontal line test has an inverse or it doesn't. So a function f has an inverse that is a function, the f inverse, if there is no horizontal line that intersects the graph of the function, f at more than one point. And on one-to-one -one functions, it passes the horizontal line test, which means there are no y values that repeat. Only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. So here we can come to this function. We know it is a function because we could do the vertical line test. We can do a horizontal line test anywhere on our graph and see that it only hits at one spot so it passes the horizontal line test. This is an upside down parabola. It is a function. I can draw a vertical line anywhere to see that it's a function. But if I draw a horizontal line, I hit twice. So this does not have an inverse. This function here also does not have an inverse. It is a function if I draw a vertical line, but it does not have an inverse when I draw a horizontal line. Now this one has an inverse function. I can draw the line for a vertical to see it's a function, and I can draw a horizontal line anywhere, and I only hit the function once. So that tells me it will have an inverse. So x cubes will have inverses. x squareds will not have an inverse. All right, so let's do another problem on finding an inverse. So this will be example three. So if we have f of x equals x plus four quantity cubed, and we are looking to find the inverse. So the first thing we're going to do is change f of x becomes y. So y equals x plus four cubed. And then remember, we're going to swap x and y. So x is equal to y plus 4 cubed. And now we solve for y. Well, the first thing I have to do here is take the cubed root of both sides because I can't solve for y while it's inside the parentheses. So now I have the cubed root of x is equal to y plus 4 because that cubed root will take care of the cubing. 
and then I'll subtract 4. So I have the cubed root of x minus 4 equal to y. Make sure you are careful that you don't put the minus 4 under the radical because it is separate from it. So be careful about that. Now I change that to the f inverse. So the f inverse of x is equal to that cubed root of x minus 4, still not under the radical. All right, let's do another one. So example 4. If we have f of x equal to 4x plus 3 over x minus 1. So again, the first thing we do is f of x becomes y. And then we have to swap x and y. So x equals 4y plus 3 over y minus 1. Now I have to solve for y, but it's a little bit harder this time to solve for y because I have y in two places. So I'm going to have to multiply both sides by that y minus 1. So over here I will end up with x times y minus 1 is equal to, the y minus 1's will cancel, I have 4y plus 3. Now I will multiply that and get xy minus x equals to 4y plus 3. Now you have to decide which side you want to have the y on. It doesn't matter. You can move the y's to this to the left or you can move them to the right. I'm going to go ahead and move them over to the right side. So I'm going to subtract xy and get negative x equal to 4y minus xy plus 3. Now I'm going to move the 3 over to the other side. And I get negative x minus 3 equals 4y minus xy. Now I need to divide out my, or factor out my y. So I get negative x minus 3 equals y times 4 minus x. So I just factor the y out of both terms. Then I'll divide by 4 minus x. And I end up with negative x minus 3 over 4 minus x equals y. And then again, that y becomes my f inverse. So we have negative x minus 3 over 4 minus x. Now, you can actually get a couple of different versions of the answer because you could... Um, have negative 3 minus x instead of negative x minus 3. They're the same thing, it doesn't matter. The other thing that you could get, depending on which side you move them on, all of the signs could be different. So instead of having something that looks like this, you could have positive x plus 3 over negative 4 plus x. Those are exactly the same thing. Basically, it's just multiplied by negative 1, so it changes all of the signs. Those are the same. It just depends on which way you move them and in the order you put them, but they are equivalent answers. So just be aware of that. Sometimes if you're working it and you, you worked, maybe you stopped and you worked it on your own, this would still be an equivalent answer. And if you had 3 plus x on the top and x minus 4 on the bottom, it doesn't matter as long as your signs are matching either way.